Hey, Greg from Bureaucracy here again uh, with another awkward beer review. Today we're doing something a bit different. Actually, it's not different because I think we did a homebrew before. Um, this one's from my friend Brent Edwards. Uh, he's working as an assistant brewer and bartender down at the new Good George pub in Hamilton. Uh, I've had a few of his beers before and he's a pretty good brewer, so I'm looking forward to this. This, I prepared it earlier, is an oatmeal stout. And uh, I don't know much more about it than that. I may have, um, he may have said it was slightly stronger than it should be. But uh, let's see what happens. I've got my little Biavana tasting glass today. I thought the lion red glass from last time might have just been a bit much. So let's see. Well, it's a beautiful colour. Uh, quite clear. There's a little bit of haze there, but it's so dark that the haze doesn't really matter in this style. Massive, dense, coffee coloured head there. Beautiful. Uh, what have we got? Oh, milk chocolate. Cadbury's milk chocolate. That's what that is. It's, um, you know those Easter eggs that you get like rabbits, um, and you unwrap it and it's got that big hit, you know, straight out of the foil of chocolate. That's what that smells like. A little bit deeper, I'm getting some toasted, toasted cereal. Um, almost a muesli note. And raisins. This is sounding like a breakfast drink. Chocolate and muesli. Mm. Right, let's taste. Oh, that's a good beer. It's rich, it's silky in the mouth, exactly what an oatmeal stout should be. Um, if it is strong, I'm not really picking up the alcohol. I, you know, I would have said it's about five and a half, maybe six percent. Um, it's got these deep woody notes, uh, a big, big, that milk chocolate hit is there in spades. And it just goes on and on. It's a, a lovely finish. I could drink this all night. Well done, Brent. Oh, yup. So Brent was saying he entered uh, the previous version of this in the National Homebrew Competition and it didn't do so well. Um, I think this would be at least a silver medal, um, probably a strong silver. That's really, really good. Why not a gold? There's just something not... There's a little bit too much nuttiness, and the chocolate dominates a bit too much for me. It's, you know, an oatmeal stout should be a meld of flavours. There's also a slightly dusty mouthfeel I'm getting. Um, other than that, yeah, pretty damn good beer. As good as anything commercial um, in, the, in the oatmeal stout category that I've had. So yeah, cheers for that. I'll be back in a second with the next beer. Right, back again. Uh, second beer for the day is something I've been meaning to try for a while, but haven't had a chance. Uh, Twisted Hop, Hop Back. Um, this is a brewery that's dear to my heart, or rather was dear to my heart, because the original brewery is, uh, was a sad victim of the, the February earthquake down in Christchurch. Um, well, actually it was more a victim of the bureaucracy that followed, but uh, that's another story. Um, anyway, it's good to see they're back producing beer again. Um, I'm pretty sure this is brewed out of their new facility. I could be wrong. Don't know. Anyway, apparently they got a new toy in the new brewery, which is a hop back. Um, which, if you don't know, is like a little box that you stuff with hops and, and the wort flows through it on the way out of the kettle. Uh, or sometimes out of the whirlpool, depending on how your brewery's set up. Um, and it infuses fresh hot flavour as the beer runs through it, so I'm quite excited about trying this. I've always loved Twisted Hop IPA, it's always been a favourite beer of mine, uh, and I'm looking forward to seeing what the hop back is like and the, the new brewery character brings to the table. Okay, so we've got a beautiful gold pour, gold colour, just a slight off-white head, um, Big lemony uh, citrus notes on the nose. Fresh lemon rind, maybe a little bit of orange underneath that. I think it's all single hop. I think it's New Zealand Cascade. Canterbury grown malted barley and showcasing New Zealand Cascade. So it doesn't mean it's an all, all Cascade, I guess, but um, it's certainly subtle and it's. Uh, very, very well integrated. The, the malt is presenting as a nice, slightly biscuity, uh, slightly bready undernote.
extremely drinkable. Um, this bottle might have been might be a little a little old. I'm just getting a little bit of oxidation. Um, nothing bad. In fact, it almost adds to the beer. Um, yeah, very nice beer. Only five five and a bit percent. Five point four, I believe. Five point eight. So okay, maybe not a summer quaffer, but uh, not too bad at all. Lovely lingering finish. Uh, more of that citrusy hop. Uh, gets slightly oily on your tongue. Quite an English, a very English sort of an IPA, rather than an American big brash assertive thing. Um, but the hops are a little more assertive than you usually get in an English IPA. Very nice, certainly something I'll be seeking out and drinking, and I'd love to try this on tap. Probably an excuse to go to Christchurch. Right, back soon with beer number three. Cheers. Okay, so our third beer of the day is from Boundary Road Brewing, uh, <laughs> Brewing or as they're more commonly known, Independent Liquor. Uh, they've been in the news a bit lately with uh, the definition of craft beer coming up around lion purchasing Emerson's uh, and then controversially releasing their own Crafty Beggars craft beer range which seems to take pot shots at the very concept of craft beer. Um, and these guys have been often held up as a big brewery doing craft beer right or at least having an honest crack at it. Um, I've been both impressed and disappointed with their releases in the past. Uh, some I've thought are about as, about good enough to tip down the drain, and the others I've actually would keep in my fridge any time. Uh, the Resident series and Spike's Red Rye Ale, I think, uh, has been one of my favourites. Um, so this is called Stolen Base, and it's an American double IPA, which is a you know an impressive way to go for a big brewer. Uh, and I do like the quote on the back. It says, the biggest religion in America is baseball, closely followed by religion. <laughs> which it then goes on to talk about what a double IPA is, which is great. Um, so anyway, let's open this beer and have a crack at it. Okay. So it's around about, I think it's 8%. It is 8% which is, you know, up in, up in double IPA territory, beautiful orange colour, that just about glows in the dark. And a slight uh, beige creamy head, when I say slight, I mean it's quite big, I mean it's slightly coloured. Um, yeah, just a stunning looking beer. Wow, big grapefruit and uh, pine tree on the nose. Impressive so far. This could be a, a pretty impressive beer. Let's have a taste. Oh, and it falls apart. It's, um, actually that's slightly unfair. It's not awful, but there's a big hot fermentation ester going on there. Um, I'm getting some nail polish remover, um, that sort of acetone or acetate. Um, I always forget which is which. <laughs> uh, it's just slightly chemically, uh, which is, I, I'm not saying, you know, I'm not saying big breweries brew with chemicals, you know, more water's a chemical. Um, what I'm saying is that there is a, a slight industrial acetone, acetate note to it. Um, it kind of ruins it because there's a, this beautiful malt going on there, this big, uh, creamy, fresh baked um, cookie, cookie dough um, note going on, which is lovely. Uh, but the, and the hops, as I said, it's a, a big bomb of grapefruit, and then that really sharp medicinal note runs right down the centre and just kind of spoils the beer. Um, let's have a little bit more. Yeah, no, it doesn't improve on second sip. Um, there's, there's quite a hot alcohol uh, going on there too. It, it's yeah, a lot of warmth around the top of my, top of my chest and bottom of my throat. Um, yeah, that's a bit sad really. I, I had high hopes. Uh, I guess Boundary Road, try again. I'll keep drinking it. I'll keep trying. I'm not going to write you off. Right, that's me for today. Awkward beer reviews. Uh, hi to Joseph Wood, my number one fan, and Neil Miller who doesn't have to look at my shorts. Cheers guys.